cap, not, not, not the baseball type of cap, but the normal official police cap, the, that type, or the kingly caps also, when the kings wear. But uh, I, I could see that uh, the area between the canopy and uh, the upper part of the heart, that strip that runs between the two, is a, is a bit uh, grayish green, light green. I even still see it now as I speak with you. And then the upper part was kind of a yellowish or creamish green, a lighter, a bit lighter. And so as people lined up to access the market, the Lord presented him there, and he was inspecting each person and their identities. He was inspecting each person and their identities. And it amazed me, because as he was inspecting to allow, each person had to be inspected before they allowed to enter into the market. Each person had to be inspected before they allowed in terms of their identity. And what amazed me so much is that the identity was on the phone. So every person that arrived to him, he took the phone, he opened the back of the phone, and the back of the phone, there was a chip. There was a chip, this chip, the SIM, the SIM card. What I saw was like the SIM of the phone. So he pulled it out, he checked, he confirmed that this is the person, he pushed it back and closed the back, he gave them the phone, he said, you can now go and buy and sell. It's like that. So there's a big line, he was controlling karma. He was controlling trade. He was controlling the selling and buying. Because he bundled up all the markets and he brought them under his jurisdiction. So he was controlling at the gate to who enters the market to sell and buy. And so you, 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 people could bring the, the, their phone, he turns the back, he opens the back. I thought he was removing the battery, but when I checked like this, he removed the small chip, he checked it, and he confirmed this is the person. He pushed it back, covered and gave him and said, you can proceed. Then some of them, he warned them. Those who are very philanthropic, trying to help other people that cannot access the market. I saw that he warned them. He was warning them. And then uh, so, so, so a lot of suffering took place. I see a lot of suffering that is coming to the earth. And then after that, I saw now the traders, traders also, the traders. I saw the traders also. And the traders I saw, I could see that they were not doing well in their trade. Because I could see one of them is wearing a white coat. I think, I don't know if it was a butcher or a baker, but, but he was selling grocery and things. And then after, he, he went there and he, he took, he paid, and he purchased, I think it was about five slices of bread with a Kalito blue band, uh, margarine, or butter at the side. And so when he purchased it, he came out, and then I could see him swallow saliva as he was walking with it in his toaster. He was like, ah, at least finally I've got this one, I'm going to eat. So there was a situation which may almost seem like a hunger, a famine also takes place. A famine, a hunger, a scarcity. A scarcity also takes place. Because I could see that this seller, even he, after going and securing five slices of bread on, uh, on, on, uh, on, on his motor toaster with that little, some little uh, butter and, and the blue band, margarine, whatever it was, and you could see as well as the life of them, uh, finally I got something I can eat. So there is going to be tremendous famine coming to the earth also at the same time. Scarcity, depravity, depletion of resources, lack, hunger and famine. This past night, that is the kind of conversation the Lord Jehovah has engaged me on this past night. It is incredible, it is dreadful, it is very shocking to see this. The Bible says very clearly here in the book of Revelation chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11, it says, the beast out of the earth, and it says, then I saw the second beast 
coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Verse 15, Revelation 13, he says, The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. Verse 16. It also forced all the people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Verse 17. It says, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Verse 18, it says, this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of of a man, the number is six, six, six. So this is what I saw. This is what the Lord engaged me on this past night. A tremendous conversation involving the second beast. I know that in the first conversation, the Lord has presented a clash. He has sent me and set me up, and there was a severe, brutal clash that took place between he that speaks with you and the beast, and he wounded the beast fatally, and the beast collapsed, and in 2007, I already released that message, and even gave, sat with graphic drawings, graphic presenters, graphic designers, and drew the first beast, how it lay dead, it lay collapsed in front of me. When the Lord charged, caused me to charge the beast, and I struck him, and he collapsed in front of me. But now, he has again made me have an encounter with the second beast. And the second beast, I saw that he's checking, he's controlling, he's exercising authority of the first beast, and he's opening up the phone and checking the identity of all people before they could sell or buy. Buy or sell. Unless they had the mark. Now, this kind of conversation comes at a very, very important time, at a very critical time, uh, a very, very tricky time, because just at this time, the Lord has now escalated the fulfillment of the words of He that speaks with you now, the words of His servant that is speaking with you. He has accelerated. There is a prophetic acceleration. Everybody on the face of the earth that has breath can right now see this, that there is a prophetic acceleration that is happening right now as I speak. The prophecies I spoke in 2005, 2004, 2006, 2007, they are now being fulfilled now at the same time. So everybody in the face of the earth can now tell that there is a tremendous and 
unwanted prophetic acceleration. And it, it is astounding as it is shocking and bewildering. But everybody in their souls, those that are born again, they can tell that the earth is sitting on the verge of a major, major, major historic visitation. The snatching away of the church. This conversation now comes in the face of this kind of accelerated prophetic fulfillment, prophetic acceleration. The prophecies I gave the team and the team at the ICM at the radio station, the team in Nairobi, they are now working through the archives. They are finding all the prophecies that I gave. The monumental prophecies that I gave, and it's so shocking to find the accuracy, the detail that I spoke then, 2005, 2004, 2006, all through. And they are standing fulfillment at this hour, and all of them are being fulfilled at the same time. The floods coming to Florida, the floods coming to the Gulf of Mexico. In Houston, Texas, the earthquake coming to Mexico, the judgment of floods to the Caribbean, the collision of the neutron stars above the earth here, and I said debris, there will be debris, and yes, yesterday when it was discovered, there was news conferences across the entire globe. And there was debris. And I said in the prophecy, one of the prophecies that the team in Nairobi discovered this morning that was recorded at the head office here, tremendous, shocking. Another one recorded in Germany, in Berlin. Another one recorded at the Egerton University during the, the, the public lecture. Some of them given on radio, live on radio as prophecies. You even see in those video recordings, you see that I look very different from what I am today. Tremendous shocking time in the history of the church. This conversation beyond the rapture of the church, beyond the snatching away of the church, is happening at a time when there is a prophetic acceleration of the wonders in heaven. It's amazing that the Lord uses he that speaks with you, now uses his servant to shake the heaven. It's an amazing time. It's a shocking time on the earth and in the skies above the earth, in the deep space. On the 7th of October, 2007, recorded right here in Nairobi, I myself watched it again this morning, and it's so shocking, astounding, and bewildering. It is stunning. The accuracy, the details of what scientists are describing as having happened in the deep space, the depth of the deep space. That the Lord is now using his mightiest prophet to shake the heavens and the Bible, and the way they are reporting it in the news media here, they are saying it shook the universe and the wobbling, the wobbling of space, space world, when the electromagnetic waves and the gravitational forces rippled across the space. Hey! The wonders Joel talks about. The wonders you see I read in the book of Luke across the globe this past Sunday. The wonders I read in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean cities. The tossing of the seas. And up in the heavens here, the shaking of the heavens. It's amazing to read how the scientists yesterday in their press briefings, the, the, the nuclear scientists, the astrophysicists, the astronomers, all of them press briefings across the globe. All news media breaking news. And they are saying the collision caused a ripple, a wobble in the space, in the constellation, in the infrastructure of space. 
where the Bible says, the shaking of space. The shaking of the heavens above the earth, the roaring of the sea. Wow! How mighty this hour! That he could use he who speaks with you now. He could use the servant that speaks to you now. He could use his mightiest prophet to shake the heavens, the deep space, and those ripples, and the earth comes to a stop. Hey! What an awesome time on the earth! To be born again, to be alive, even to witness this hour in the, on the earth. And then now he comes yesterday at night and he speaks about the church has been taken and the great tribulation is on. And he presents now the second beast. I think the message is very clear to everybody. Prepare the way. Be holy. Repent. Receive Jesus. The Messiah is coming. There is no question right now that the Messiah is coming. Look at the way the Lord has ravished all false prophets, all false apostles, all other ministries. Put them down and raise his voice. Literally ignore them all and raise his voice to prepare the nations for the glorious coming of the King of Glory, the Messiah. Who cannot see now? Who is it that can be lied to at this hour? Everybody now knows the Messiah is coming. But everybody must repent and be righteous and be holy and listen to the voice of the Lord. Like a harbinger that goes ahead. So is this voice now that if you follow the avenger, you will arrive at the Messiah. May those who have ears prepare. The church I see him taking is a very holy church. Shalom, shalom, todaraba, todalahem. Shalom, hamerim. Toda, toda. Toda, toda.